Hey, it's Erin. If you're looking to get leaner and stronger in less time, and perhaps you dislike traditional cardio as much as I do, then this video is for you. We're gonna go over finishers today. And finishers are simply five to 15 minutes of work done after your weight workout. Now, the benefits of finishers are, I would say, almost limitless. So if you're looking to not only increase your strength, but increase your endurance, if you wanna increase your VO2 max and your conditioning, you can also improve your ability to handle more work. You'll be able to recover faster. This is also great for working on that mental fortitude, so that toughness. You know, I think we all have these perceived limits and these perceived limits are self-imposed. And a lot of times it can be important to challenge those limits to make sure that we haven't set a glass ceiling for ourselves. Because oftentimes we put those limits in place and they're just kind of arbitrary. So you're a lot stronger, you're a lot tougher than you think you are. Now, the finisher is five to 15 minutes. And as a general rule of thumb, if you're gonna do a five minute finisher, typically that is gonna be a bit more intense and shorter. So you may be looking at three to five sets of something for 10 to 30 seconds. And if you're gonna go for 15 minutes, for example, you may be looking at about two minutes of work and you're gonna take a little bit longer recovery in between. So that 15 minutes is 15 minutes total. That includes your work time and your rest time. I'm gonna leave a few finishers in the description below so you have something to go off of. And keep in mind, just like anything else, these should be based on progression. So for example, if you're working on a five minute finisher and you're doing kettlebell swings, for example, you may do four sets of 10 reps at a certain weight. And next week you might do four sets of 11, or you may go up in weight just a little bit. So without further ado, let's take a peek at these finishers and see how they can fit into your routine. Our first finisher is the thruster. Now for this particular workout, I'm going to be using the landmine, but feel free to use dumbbells as well. Now for a landmine thruster, you've got a bit more stability than dumbbells. And I typically like to do lower reps for this exercise. So this one is going to be on the more intense side, or you can actually pair it with another one of these exercises on the list. And you wanna start with your feet at about one and a half times shoulder width. You wanna have your elbows underneath that bar. You wanna have a either an interlocking grip or hand over hand grip on that bar. And you are basically going to lower yourself into squat position. And you wanna think about exploding from the hips upward and simultaneously pressing that bar upwards. So you're looking at about 10 to 15 reps of this exercise, and it should be generally a little a bit slower on that eccentric versus on the concentric. So you want to think about exploding up out of that squat and this is going to help a lot with working on power and strength. Our next finisher is a kettlebell swing. Now with all of these exercises on the list you are looking at a highly inefficient exercise and inefficient is amazing when it comes to making progress because it causes the body to work much harder than it should. So your kettlebell swing, you're constantly working both against that weight, so you're counterbalancing, and you're actually pushing that weight forward with your posterior chain, and you must control it at all times, and it is a really excellent exercise. So as we are getting into our stance, one and a half times shoulder width with the feet, that overhand grip. You want to kind of swing that kettlebell just a little bit, push it with your hips, get a feel for it. And as that kettlebell comes back, you want to think about bumping it with your hips and keeping that back nice and flat, slight bend in the knee, explode upward, push that kettlebell and use your arms to guide the kettlebell. Now your arms should be extended 
Don't lock out the elbows, but simply keep your arms in place to guide that kettlebell up to that midpoint and then allow it to glide backwards and you're going to repeat that movement. Now, if you are new to a kettlebell swing, one of the great tricks or tips for learning how to do it is to place another kettlebell in between your feet and this is going to help you from squatting down too low because one of the major mistakes that are made with kettlebell swings is squatting too low you really think about it as a hinge exercise and it's also primarily a lower body exercise so you don't want to think about pulling that kettlebell with your arms if you find yourself pulling the kettlebell with your arms chances are that kettlebell is going to be just a little bit too light for you now, just like thrusters, kettlebells, kettlebell swings, probably looking at eight to 15 reps per um, set here. So you don't wanna do too many reps because we don't want the form to break down. So it's really important that you choose a heavier kettlebell so you're able to get that intensity and you're able to gas yourself as you get towards the end of the set before you reach that mechanical failure. All right, moving on. I think we have everyone's favorite exercise here, which is the burpee. Now for this particular exercise, I've added a jump at the end. Um, I love incorporating some of my collegiate track and field days into my current workouts just to maintain those fast switch muscles. So just like the first couple of exercises, you're looking at relatively lower reps for this one. So anywhere from eight to 20 reps, this is going to be be purely a body weight exercise unless you decide to hold dumbbells. If that's the case, then you're looking at keeping that to below 15 reps if you're using weights. Now for the burpee, you're going to start in a standing position. Then you are going to crouch down, place your hands on the floor, kick your feet out to plank position, and then you're going to quickly tuck those feet back up to a crotch position, and you're going to explode upwards out of that burpee. And that is one rep. So as you perform this exercise, make sure that you are getting into plank position. You're not allowing your hips to drop. Make sure that you are placing even weight distribution on those feet so you're able to jump evenly and just go all out. This is another great inefficient exercise, excellent for building power and for burning fat. Next, we are moving on to the assault bike. The assault bike is a total body exercise. The harder you push, the harder the resistance becomes. So you wanna make sure that before you get on that bike, that that seat is set at about hip height. And when you get on the bike, you wanna make sure that as you're cycling through, when your leg is completely extended, that you've got just a slight bend to that knee. So you don't wanna be able to lock your knees out on this particular exercise. The assault bike is excellent. You can go anywhere from 10 seconds all the way up to two minutes. So it is great for those longer work working sets, or it is really good to be able to combine this with the first three exercises. You can, if you would like, place more emphasis on either the lower body or on the upper body with your mind-muscle connection. So think about what you'd like to accomplish. As you start to fatigue, think about perhaps shifting emphasis from either upper to lower body. Our last finisher is going to be a sled or plate push. Now, just like the assault bike, the sled is going to be a, an excellent option for those sets that are longer than 30 seconds. So if you're looking for something that is going to require a bit more volume, a bit more work, incorporating the sled is excellent. Now, another great thing about the sled is that it is a primarily concentric or pushing movement. So you're able to add a lot more volume without getting sore. This is going to be really important as we talk about making progress. As you work towards increasing your volume, you want to be able to add exercises that are going to get your results, but aren't going to make you unnecessarily sore. So sled is an excellent option. Now for this particular variation, I like to get into a 
I call it dry phase from sprint days. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to start with arms extended and you want to think about putting your body into plank position at about a 45 degree angle from the floor. So this is a an excellent power position, really good for driving strength, excellent for getting you just into proper pressing position. And you are going to push and you're going to go for the allotted time frame. So whether you're going for 30 seconds all the way up to two minutes, consider using the sled as a finisher. Those are our five finishers for fat loss. Let me know what you think in the comments below and if you'd like to see more. Now, these workouts can be done on their own. You can combine them. I will leave a description below as far as suggested workouts that you can do after your weight workouts. So again, if you're trying to improve VO2 max, increase your strength, stay lean without doing traditional cardio, consider doing those finishers. That's it for this time. Until next time, train smart and train hard, y'all.